Caperton Classic Art presents Leonidas at Thermopylae. This wonderful masterpiece was created by Jacques-Louis David in two stages, from 1799 to 1803, and again from 1813 to 1814, in collaboration with his pupil Georges Rouget. It was purchased by Louis XVIII after the fall of Napoleon. The scene is crowded and theatrical and takes place in 480 BCE, before the Battle of Thermopylae, the Gates of Fire in Greek. The narrow pass was the ideal place for a small force to thwart the invasion of Greece by a massive Persian army. Everyone knew that this was a suicide mission, and it was designed to give time to the Greek city-states to prepare their forces to resist the Persian aim to conquer Greece. The story inspired David at a time when France was waging its own campaign against the conservative European powers who wanted to overthrow the French Revolution. Later in 1813, David was again inspired to return to the world as the European powers were again united against the rule of Napoleon. David was spurred to exhibit more action in his figures after Napoleon criticized the lack of action in his sketches for the Sabine women in 1799. This action can readily be seen in Leonidas at Thermopylae. In this composition, David shows the army in chaos with figures engaged in various frantic activities. In the middle is the calm King Leonidas, surrounded by preparations for battle. He is lighted more than the other figures and is the only figure who is motionless amidst the turmoil of the others. His eyes are upturned to the heavens as he appears to silently beseech the divine for aid in the upcoming impossible struggle. On the left side of the painting, a soldier carves a phrase in Greek, translated as, go passerby to Sparta, tell obedient to her law we fell. This again emphasizes the fact that Leonidas and his men were well aware of the nature of their sacrifice. David had been born in, on August the 30th, 1748 in Paris to a prosperous family and when his father was killed in a duel, his mother placed him in the care of his uncles at the age of nine years. A poor student who was always drawing, he insisted on being apprenticed to a painter and began his studies with Francois Boucher. Attempts to win the Prix de Rome two times, David went on a hunger strike in 1772 when he was 24. Then he was persuaded by his faculty to continue his studies, which he renewed but lost again in the next year. But he won in 1774. He left for Italy in October 1775 with his mentor Vienne. David stayed in Rome for five years studying Poussin, Caravaggio, the Caracci, and Raphael. He came under the influence of Raphael Mainz, who opposed the Rococo style and favored a more serious treatment of classical subjects. He the ruins of Pompeii and filled 12 sketchbooks with drawing from which he drew inspiration for the rest of his life. He was not popular with his fellow students who nevertheless recognized his genius. When he returned to Paris, he was housed at the king's expense in the Louvre and married the daughter of the king contractor in buildings. He thereby came into money and collected about 50 students. His father-in-law funded his return to Rome where he created his famous work, Oath of the Horatii, in 1784. David appears to be referencing Enlightenment values in Rousseau's social contract. He blatantly contrasts the active masculine with the passive feminine, which is in alignment with Rousseau's ideas. In 1787, David did not gain the position of director of the French Academy in Rome, which office he had sought. He returned to France, where he displayed the death of Socrates in the Salon of 1787. Critics were almost universal in their high praise of the work and recognized the Republican values of self-sacrifice that David portrayed in the masterpiece. The royal government was not impressed, and it should be remembered that the beginnings of the French Revolution were only two years away. In that year, David created the lictors bringing to Brutus the bodies of his son, which was presented as the French Revolution began. At first censored by the royal government, they had to give way to the outrage of the people, and the painting was exhibited. Of course, the painting was a Republican symbol, and David followed his Republican leanings in serving in the National Assembly and voting for the execution of Louis XVI in 1793. He continued to produce great paintings such as the Oath of the Horatii, the Tennis Court Oath in 1792, and the Death of Marat in 1793. When his patron Robespierre was executed, David himself was thrown into prison from August 2, 1794 to December, and again from May 29th to August 1795. His next great work was the intervention of the Sabine women in 1799, which came to the attention of Napoleon. David soon became a major 
artistic supporter of Napoleon, as is shown in his Napoleon and St. Bernard Pass in 1801, which was commissioned by the First Consul. Two years later, he became the Chevalier de Légion de Terre. The next year, he became an official court painter for the Empire, and he created the coronation of Napoleon in 1806. Two years later, he became an officer of the Legion of Honor, and then commandant in 1815. When Napoleon fell from power and the Bourbons were restored, David was pardoned by Louis XVIII, but refused the post of court painter and went into self-imposed exile to Brussels. He led a quiet life there and, and painted small portraits. He did create the anger of Achilles in 1819, and his last great work was Mars being disarmed by Venus of 1824. He suffered a stroke in 1825, and on December the 29th of that year was struck by a carriage when leaving the theater. He died from his injuries. Caperton Classic Art presents stunning print reproductions of this wonderful work of art, Leonidas at Thermophili, for you to enjoy yourself or to give as gifts to your loved ones.